Okay, I do just want to, because we have, I think, most people here, uh, just do two quick polls before we begin. One, I just want everyone to quickly tell me what program of interest most interests you. Um, if you're more than one, just put on sure more than one. It's always good for us to see. Everyone can pop this in. Always interesting to see. I think not everyone has voted, but I think the rest of us are staff. Okay, there we go. So there we go, which is a nice selection of all of the five um, MAs, which is wonderful. Cool, okay. Thank you, Victor. Okay, last poll I want to just quickly do else is just to um, ask, have any of you, oops. One last poll. I just want to find out how many of you have never been to Israel before. I know some of you are from Israel. Okay, I think most people have answered. Okay, there's a couple of people just joined. If you have just joined, welcome to the session. Just to let everyone know that we are recording the session just so we can send that to people afterwards. And um, do pop into the chat where you're coming in from. We do like to see. And I'm going to just share that. Now that's actually quite surprising. I was surprised at that. Um, almost more than half of you have already been to Israel before, so you're aware of Israel in, in Tel Aviv. Wonderful. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the session. I would like to hand over to Professor Itai Senid, the Dean of Social Sciences, who will introduce the International Graduate School. Uh, Professor Senid, delighted to have you here. Thank you, uh, David. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. This is a very nice showing. I see uh, 47 of you, which means that there are about 40 students. The rest of us are faculty. Um, I wanted to um, um, greet you all for the meeting. It is a very important meeting. Uh, talk very briefly about the International Graduate School of uh, Social Sciences which is a phenomenon uh, to actually keep the sustainability of our international program. Uh, uh, an institution that we have established two years ago and has proven itself to be very effective precisely at that. I will explain in a second. And uh, right now the light is not right. So I will tell you a little bit about the extraordinary aspects of our international programs and then uh, show you uh, the view from my hotel room to prove it, to prove my point. Um, so to be, to begin with the, be with the beginning, we have had throughout the years, um, more or less five international program programs. Uh, the better ones thrive. Those who are not quite fit for the times uh, change the nature or name or structure. But we uh, are stable at five programs. We will probably uh, rise to six or seven by the end of the decade. Um, and uh, we have noticed that there are a lot of commonalities across uh, uh, programs, uh, especially uh, having to do with the extracurricular activities uh, that we are all very eager to uh, uh, add to the academic programs. The academic programs uh, really live um, uh, their own academic um, lives. Um, there are some synergies that we're using to our benefits, but uh, these are academic programs and as such, they are disciplinary and they uh, follow disciplinary uh, structure lines. Uh, but the extracurricular activities are oftentimes common. 
And so we have uh, created this uh, organization that is uh, orchestrated by Ayelet Fishman, who is with us, uh, to make sure that these synergies uh, work out. It also helps us with uh, keeping in touch with all of you. Um, but it turned out that uh, in the last challenge that we had for all of the programs due to the special situation in which Israel uh, now finds itself um, after the tragedy of uh, uh, the 7th of October, um, the horrible massacre, um, it really helps us to uh, sustain ourselves in the simple sense of the term, in that we can uh, create environments where we can deal with challenges like the one we're dealing with now. And actually, the truth of the matter is that our international programs at the uh, Faculty of Social Sciences have not uh, suffered from uh, um, reduction in uh, numbers. Some programs has, have done a little better, others have gone down a little bit, but the overall uh, number of, a uh, very impressive number of about 160 students remained stable. Had we not had the special um, uh, situation we are finding ourselves, uh, we would be at uh, about 200 right now. Um, we know that other international programs on our Tel Aviv campus and in other universities in Israel have um, all but collapsed due to the situation. So this is uh, uh, the essence of the structure of the International uh, uh, Graduate School of Social Sciences. It is really a sustainability mechanism. Um, besides all kind of extracurricular activities such as trips to different parts of the country and um, helps, uh, help that we give to uh, individual students with all kinds of uh, uh, needs, um, we also uh, create special um, uh, courses. We bring um, uh, international professors from all over the world. They stay with us two or three weeks. And usually these are professors that have a, a, an international uh, uh, name um, and uh, um, a specialty that we probably do not cover as well as we want to. And we bring them uh, uh, to Israel to um, to teach a session. And then we open it up to all of you. And unfortunately, actually, we, um, uh, a lot of the students are not taking advantage of these classes. So you as incoming cohort, please pay attention to these advertisements that uh, Ayelet sends out. These are very uh, uh, important visitors. And we oftentimes find ourselves, find ourselves with um, a few students that we have liked to uh, uh, have. Uh, a current example is a, a professor that uh, used to be one of the most uh, important uh, academics in, in uh, Russia, um, uh, Vladimir Mao, who is teaching actually the, a course on the current history of Russia, a very interesting course. Um, and we have very uh, few students registered. Um, so um, this is um, uh, actually in uh, the spring. And again, this is for the cohort that has come before you, so it's not directly necessarily relevant to you, but still, I would just mention that in the spring, we have one of the top uh, uh, economists from uh, Maryland, a close friend who has visited us uh, a, a few times, um, uh, Sebastian Galliani, you can look him up, uh, the top uh, the national uh, uh, econo uh, economist uh, um, from uh, the University of Maryland, and, and that's just two examples. These are I, I get these two examples to give you kind of the uh, uh, the way that the characteristic feature of these professors they usually come from uh, a, a significant random man. They teach something that we would otherwise uh, not be able to teach, and it is open to all of you as international students, uh, international master students, and you should uh, uh, know this. Um, uh, probably the last thing that I wanted uh, to mention before I let the uh, people who really know everything you, you want to know uh, talk with you um, is that uh, our international programs are unique, they're different than I, I've taught pretty much everywhere you can think uh, about in the world, uh, China, the United States, uh, Russia, uh, all of Europe. Um, in similar programs. And the unique feature of our program is that it is uh, all, all five programs that we are now opening next year are hands-on programs. Um, and, and what that means is that we really take you to places where these things uh, really happen and show you what happens on the ground. 
So each and every program, uh, whether it's a security and diplomacy and you travel through um, different regions of Israel and see the security issues hands on, such as the Golan Heights or Jerusalem, places like that, or if it's uh, uh, climate change and, and, and you go places to see what uh, experimentation and professional advances have been developed uh, uh, in Israel to meet the uh, climate crisis um, with a, a sustainable development. Uh, um, Anna is here with us. So we actually take you uh, all the way to uh, 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 India and Africa. And we're now thinking about uh, another site in uh, South America where you go to the most uh, remote villages who really need uh, uh, sustainability programs. And our students go the workout plans, sustainability plans uh, that are actually implemented uh, while they are there or immediately after they leave. Um, so this is uh, the kind of uh, uh, activities, hands-on activities that are almost non-existent in uh, in other programs around the globe. And even if they mention travel to here, travel to there, usually it's the kind of travel where you go from one classroom to another classroom, that one classroom is in uh, is at NYU and the other classroom is in uh, Buenos Aires, but it's, it's, it's just a classroom as opposed to uh, here. I'm just worried that I will get all of you kind of uh, sun blinded, but I do want to show you what I see through the window just to prove my point. Okay, so this is, uh, okay, let's see if anyone can guess actually where, where are we? Okay, so this is, can you see something? Do you see something? I know where you are, but. Okay, so uh, this is a case in point. This is an organization, one of the largest organizations in the world. Uh, dealing with sustainable development, mostly uh, energy sustainability, renewable energy. Um, the place is Eilat, a very uh, um, hot name on the news right now, mostly because the Houthis are trying to bum us and they can't get their acts together. But um, uh, it's uh, uh, the home of one of the largest uh, uh, incubators of uh, renewable energy uh, development startups and whatnot. And every year they, um, they uh, uh, run a, a, an international uh, uh, conference. Uh, this year we have about uh, eight of our students participating uh, and uh, another five of our graduates actually uh, actively um, uh, 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 running some of the sessions. Um, um, one of our uh, 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 graduates is uh, uh, presenting the, the work of, of one of the largest um, um, uh, fund in Israel to advance renewable energy. Uh, he completed a master's degree with us, then he completed a PhD, and, and now he runs one of the largest uh, um, pro, uh, 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 funds um, actually helping startups and he's very active here in this huge uh, 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 incubator for startups. So he's here, um, um, uh, a few of our graduates, uh, uh, one of our graduates is a top uh, uh, officer in the Israeli bank. Uh, another one is uh, uh, just completed his uh, master's in public policy. And he is here because he has a very significant position in the Ministry of Energy. Um, he's actually in charge of, of everything that has to do with uh, electric uh, uh, public transportation. Um, and, 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 and so you see that the point that I'm making is that our programs kind of take you at the opening point and get you to a really exciting workplace uh, with a very, very high percentage of placement. And uh, the placements are in such really exciting places, such as a latte lot, which, as I said, it's a, a region, uh, a local government in Israel, 
that is currently 80% uh, uh, dependent on uh, uh, renewable energy. And if it wasn't for some uh, strange regulations that we are trying to figure out right now, um, they would uh, uh, probably be 100% renewable energy. And that includes a lot where I see it in one of the fancy uh, hotels here. Um, a lot is, 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 a, is a, actually a tourist resort, a big tourist resort like Miami and other places around the globe. So think about a tourist center uh, run entirely on solar energy or almost entirely on solar energy. Um, and our graduates being kind of all over the place, you know, in the local government, in the Ministry of Energy, in the conference, in the funds that keep these, this incubator uh, going and so on and so forth. Um, I'm actually here, um, and I will conclude with that, uh, I'm actually here to get a, a special mention that this organization uh, has chosen to give us as an organization for our uh, support of uh, sustainable uh, development in general and renewable energy in particular. Um, but of course, the special mention uh, is mostly due to our ability, and I'm going to talk about it tonight when I receive the uh, prize, uh, mostly due to our uh, remarkable success at placing our students at key positions where uh, these things are being done. Um, and frankly, this is the most, uh, and, and probably the only significant um, um, uh, aspect of our contribution that uh, uh, makes us a unique uh, case to deserve this mention. Um, of course, many universities teach these things, many universities research these things. Uh, I think that the reason why we have become such an important player in the game is uh, due to the fact that we uh, actually uh, get our students into the action, into the industries uh, to do the wonderful work that they do. So this is the prospects, this is what we have to offer. And I will uh, let you now discuss uh, uh, more uh, direct uh, details that are more directly relevant to the programs. Wonderful, thank you so much, Professor Senid. Um, Okay, I do just want to quickly introduce everyone to you, to everyone, so everyone's aware of who we all are. Um, my name is David. I'm from the Lowy International School. Um, the International School is the international hub for all the other English top programs. So we're very much here as a support um, system to, to Ayelet and her team. Um, I'll begin in a few minutes, just with about a quick five minute, eight minute presentation, just telling you a bit more about the university, from a macro level, the Lowy International School, student life, funding, etc. before we then hand over to the programmes to present each of the five MAs. So I do want to introduce everyone to you. We have, from the MA in Conflict Resolution and Mediation, we have Corey Gil Schuster. Hi, Corey. I can see you there. From the MA in Security and Diplomacy, we have Anat Levy. Then we have the MA in Sustainable Development with Anna Goldstein. We have um, the MA in Social and Policy Aspects of Climate Change. We have Yochi Binke. And then we have the MA in Cyber Politics and Government with Abigail Ben Dayan. We also have Ayelet Fishman here. Ayelet is the Administrative Director of the International Graduate School of Social Sciences here at Tel Aviv University. Okay, so let me begin. Um, I'll just take five, eight minutes maximum of your time, just like I said, to give you an overview of the university, the international school, funding, student life, etc. So I'm going to begin by playing a very short video. If you can't hear it, let me know. Tel Aviv University International, the only place in the world where you can study Taoism. What is Taoism? Well, it's a local philosophy that says the best way to study is through experience. Understand with your head, learn with your feet. The best way to study a multicultural society is to live in one. Be ready with your elevator pitch. 
You never know who you'll meet on campus. If you want to learn the best marketing strategies, just go to the local market. Reading about the Startup Nation? Write your own chapter. Study literature in the place that inspired the bestseller of all time. You can't resolve a conflict until you witness one. At TAU, there is always room for more questions and 400 labs to find the answers. Come experience the wisdom of Taoism at Tel Aviv University International, where first-class education meets a second to none lifestyle. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the session. And I think, you know, Tyler's, the, the video just sums up better than I can explain it to you. And basically, it's our philosophy that you study best through experience. You learn with your head, you understand with your feet, and learning happens everywhere, and sometimes when you least expect it. And that's what Taoism basically is all about. It's you gain the most insight uh, when you take the classroom and the real world and you hit them against each other hard. When you come to us, you don't just learn in a classroom, you learn in a campus, in a city, in a country. All of these things will transform you, uh, and we call that Taoism. So this gives a good snapshot, sort of looking at Tel Aviv University from a macro level. Listen, this is Israel's largest and most comprehensive institution of higher education. We have 30,000 total students, and of that, 2,000 plus are international, and they come from 100 plus countries from all over the world. You heard in the video, we have 400 labs, nine faculties, 125 schools and departments, one campus, 220 acres just north of downtown Tel Aviv, Israel's biggest campus, also voted Israel's most beautiful campus as well. This is a big, big institution. Uh, we truly are a multidisciplinary institution of, of academic excellence. I won't go into all of them, but obviously we're very proud of our ranking as Israel's largest and most comprehensive institution of higher education, the number one choice among Israeli students. We're ranked in the top 100 innovation university. We're ranked 16th for faculty citation impact. We also have amazing rankings here in entrepreneurship, the top 10 school producing VC backed founders. And of those rankings, we are the only non US institution to make that top 10 list. So we are up there ranked alongside leading American universities like Stanford, MIT, UC Berkeley, and Harvard. And also, the university set up its very first Equality and Diversity Commission two years ago, headed up by Professor Netta Zeev. And her remit is clear is to increase equality and diversity among everyone on campus. And I'm going through this quite quickly because I'm, I'm aware that we do have, you know, five other programs to present as well. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we're a big multidisciplinary institution of academic excellence and our impact is felt large and wide. We have nine faculties and we have a vast range of research and teaching fields that create unique and fascinating connections between disciplines that are not traditionally connected to each other. And that alone provides infinite possibilities for academic creativity, world-class faculty, renowned professors, students from 100 plus country. Also every year our students perform over 300,000 hours of community service. And of course you get to enjoy the wonderful Mediterranean city of Tel Aviv, which leads me on to this slide. Um, if you've never been, Tel Aviv is a pulsating vibrant city. As you can see, it's a coastal city with amazing beaches. It's Israel's cultural and commercial capital. It's been named the, cap the Mediterranean capital of cool by the New York Times. It's a nonstop city with amazing nightlife cuisines and cultures that you can never stop exploring. Um, there's over 100 sushi restaurants in Tel Aviv. It's home to the world's third most sushi restaurants per capita behind Tokyo and New York. It's the Silicon Valley of the Middle East, home to 6,000 startups. It also has the highest doctor-human ratios in the world, 
Tel Aviv itself is home to 25,000 registered dogs and a human population of just over 400,000. So it's a very, very wonderful, wonderful place to live and also very international as well. Okay, if there's one thing else I want you to take away from the session, in addition to the wonderful programs that you're going to hear about, it's the student life team. We call them Madrachim, which is the Hebrew word for guide or counsellor. And they are all there to, to give you a nice soft landing. So when you come to us, you're not coming to a foreign country. They're there on arrival day. They organise orientation. They live in the dorms with you. They are your go-to people for any issues of support that you need 24-7. Even if it's not academic, you know, you've lost your bank card or your travel card, you need someone that speaks Hebrew, they are your go-to people. In addition to that, they'll also take you off, they'll have, you know, events on campus, you know, yoga night, movie night, pizza night. They'll take you off on day trips in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, in the north and the south, overnight trips as well. So you'll get to experience the best that Israel has to offer. Uh, and that picture actually is one of the trips to Yafo, I think, um, in the summer uh, of 2022. And so this sense of community extends through to the dorms as well. So listen, if you're looking for dorms, we have accommodation. You can see some pictures here. They're very nice. Um, they all have, you know, Wi-Fi. Um, you know, there's, there's kitchens in them. You have laundry facilities, chill out rooms, study rooms, social rooms. There's also a creche as well if you have children literally just on campus. Uh, we don't do meal plans here, but there's plenty of options for food in the dorms, in, in on campus, sorry. And also you can cook in the dorms. We What we try and do in the dorms is we try and keep all of the international students together, but at the same time, you're surrounded by Israeli students. So we like to think you get the best of both worlds. Um, and just next to campus as well, so ideal. Um, funding, so I'll send that by the way afterwards, an email with to the recording also to various links so you don't need to bother writing this link down but I do recommend to check on our website because that is where we list all of the funding and scholarship options that we offer you know whether it's program based or you know sports scholarships or for students from specific countries or regions we also list their external scholarships that we know about from external organizations like MASA the Ministry of Foreign Affairs so I do recommend to check that out uh, but I will put that in the email that I'll send out to everyone afterwards. Um, and that's me. So I hope that's given you an overview of Tel Aviv University and the Lowy International School. Uh, and like I say, we're the hub for all English taught programs and students on campus. So we have two, over 2000 international students from all over the world. Uh, we get to know all of them very well. They've, they've very much become part of, part of the family. Okay, so I'm going to hand over first to Anna Goldstein, who will present the MA in Sustainable Development. Anna, Hi, you... everyone. Hi, thank you, David. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna. I'm the coordinator for the MA program in Sustainable Development. Uh, the program is a one-year program taught in English. Uh, our program is a hybrid one, so it means that we have both Israeli and international students. Um, one of the distinctive features of the program is that our students study only once a week and all the mandatory courses are concentrated in a single weekday. Uh, usually it's on Wednesday, but our students study from morning till evening and they have the courses, of course, with the... Uh, several breaks. <laughs> um, the other distinctive feature for the program, which makes the program unique and unlike the other programs on the faculty and also in the university on the whole, that our students, they study the main courses during the first two semesters and during the summer semester, they usually travel to different sites or in Israel or in Asia or in India or in other countries where the Tau, uh, with the Tel Aviv University have local partners and have contracts for different projects. Um, it may be in academia, in industry or in other areas. So the students, they not only study the theoretical foundations for sustainable development, they also have an opportunity to implement the practical projects and they begin to work on their projects from the very beginning. 
Um, all the applicants, you are more than ready to visit the website, um, uh, which is called the Nitsan Lab. I will send to everyone who is interested uh, the link to this uh, lab afterwards. Um, the lab is uh, is running is run by one of our professors who is also is teaching professor in the program, Professor Ram Fishman. So there you can see the full list of our projects and uh, the students that that you, that are involved in these projects as well. Um, we are offering the two tracks, and it's important to mention this, the standard and the non-thesis track, and all the students at the beginning of the academic year are registered to the non-thesis track. And also the thesis one, when the, pro, when the students, after the project, they continue to work on their research. And um, uh, all, uh, as I have already mentioned, all the students are uh, registered to the non-thesis track and they're taking part in this special thesis workshop during the first semester. And after that, we decide uh, until the results, until the grades on this research uh, workshop, who will continue to the thesis track of the program. Um, regarding the terms of admission, I don't want to, to give you too much information here. You can see everything on our website, but what we ask to send is to open the portal, uh, to the profile in the online portal to upload all the required documents. You will see the list um, as soon as you send the application. And to be in contact with me, uh, you are more than welcome to send me the email uh, to contact me to ask for the Zoom meeting to speak me on phone. It's not a problem. If you need my assistance, I need additional information, or if there is anything I can help with, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm always in touch with all the students and all the applicants. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Anna. Um, I should have mentioned as well that all the programs are currently open for applications for the coming academic year. And um, when I send out the email to everyone afterwards, I'll also put in there all of the email contacts for each of the programs as well. Okay, thank you so much, Anna. Okay, next up we have the MA in Conflict Resolution and Mediation, um, Corey Gil Schuster. Hi, Hi everybody. Corey. So I'm here to represent the uh, MA in Conflict Resolution and Mediation. By conflict resolution, we're talking about conflicts between um, large groups, countries, uh, religions, states, ethnicities, conflicts are conflicts. We look at conflict from a variety of subject perspectives, uh, political science, social psychology, religion, culture, uh, law, economics. Uh, also, one of our main focuses is on skills development. So you're learning about the theory of why conflicts happen, we are also learning how to solve conflicts through courses such as mediation, negotiation, facilitation. Um, some of those are required courses, others are electives. Uh, in our program, we have a lot of electives. Uh, we encourage students to really try to focus on the aspects of where they would like to end up working in the future um, and to use the courses as much as possible to get to that. Um, we also do a lot of uh, um, on uh, on uh, training within the program where we encourage our students to do internships. We take you on a lot of trips um, and we try to give you as much of an experience within Israel to understand why conflicts happen and how, to, how do you solve them. Um, one of the other things I should mention is that we have a certificate in uh, mediation from the Tel Aviv University. It doesn't make you officially a mediator I want to be clear about that, but it does give you enough background that in your country or state or wherever you live, uh, you you can look into additional courses within the legal system or on how to become a mediator within your within the system you uh, live in. Um, with the central idea and all this that um, you're getting as many skills as possible and um, and experiences so that you can have a well-rounded idea of why conflicts happen in the world and how do you solve them. If anyone has any questions, we'll get to that after. Oh, thank you, Corey. 
Uh, we will do the Q&A session at the end, like I said at the very beginning, so we can switch off the recording. People can ask questions openly and freely. Um, okay, next up, I'd like to invite Anat Levy from the MA in Security and Diplomacy. Hi, Anat. I see you here. Anat, are you with us? Oh, maybe she's disappeared. Okay. There was a few internet issues I know on campus today. Um, okay, I'll tell you what, why don't we come back to Anat afterwards? Um, let's jump to um, the MA in social and policy aspects of climate change. Uh, Yochi, hi Yochi, I can see you there. Would you like to do your bit? Yochi, can you hear? I don't think Anat's come back in. I think you're on mute. Yeah, hi. Also, mm. um, I hope it's going to be... No, hi, everyone. I hope it's going to be stable, because I see it's a bit unstable, my connection. So um, my name is Yochi. I'm the uh, coordinator of the AMA in social and policy aspect of climate change. Don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, okay. Um, so um, our program is basically also hybrid, is to a student, Israeli student and international student. Um, it's a one year program taught by top professor in public health change um, field. Uh, we have a professor, we have also um, a member of, um, of the Knesset, a very uh, rich um, uh, uh, teaching um, experience in the, in the uh, program. Um, the, main, um, the main focus of the program is not to look just on the scientific um, cause of climate change, also the aspect of social, finance, financial, and, um, and um, political aspect of climate change. This is uh, the main um, uh, focus of the core of the uh, program. Um, the program is we've got a thesis and a non thesis track in the program. And the main um, um, benefit of the program is that we put a lot of uh, um, focus on hands on experience. Uh, all the student needs to do a practicum which is a six hour that they go to um, organization in the field of climate change. And they gain a lot of experience uh, in those organization, uh, which the main goal is after to uh, give them an advantage in the uh, labor market with the uh, necessary uh, knowledge and skill that needs today in this, uh, in, uh, in the, in the market. Um, we, um, also, I uh, have all sorts of uh, training during the year, extra training during the year that um, the main reason is to help you after um, to go and work in also not just in organizations that do the dealing in the climate change or also let's say in um, insurance company, they need an expert in this field. Um, I think that's it. Wonderful. Thank you, Yochi. And your program's about to go into it because it's just it was a new program from 2022, if I'm correct. Yes. And mm -hmm. next year will be the second year. Um, yeah. Wonderful. OK. Thank you so much, Yochi. I can see Anat's been able to come back in. Hi, Anat. Are you here? Uh, sorry about that. Um, OK. Something is playing up here. I'm going to share, share a little presentation I made with you. And uh, let's see if you can all see that. Uh, was it shared? Uh, not yet. Yet. You should be able to share. Share a screen, multiple part participants. All, all. Let's hope. No, not yet. Not yet. Did you click on the green share screen button? 
I just did. And then just share either the slide deck. Uh, oh, here it is. There it is. Can you yeah, see? that's it. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, so I want to start um, to, uh, with telling you a little bit through those um, slides about the program. Um, we have an ambassador in the first semester, an ambassador forum alternating with field trips. So um, this is a picture of uh, the Egyptian, uh, sorry, the Jordanian ambassador to Israel um, who came here two years ago, but um, we have plenty of um, ambassadors coming to talk to our uh, students. And this is one of the goals of our program, not just to um, teach you theoretical stuff, but also um, to bring in people from their fields of expertise and um, um, you know, being able to ask questions and learn first experience from them what's happening. Um, I have here a schedule. This is, for example, the fall semester, because I just wanted um, you, know, um, um, you guys to um, know what, what to expect. So as other programs are, we are um, um, we have three semesters to um, long semesters and a summer semester that is a bit shorter and more intense. Um, we start our days um, not before 1.15 um, and we um, end at 7 o'clock depending um, on the specific schedule that each one of you, um, you know, the electives that you choose to, um, to study. Um, in the summer, this is the summer semester. Each of the classes is meeting twice a week. And um, we end the um, program with the Middle East crisis simulation that is kind of uh, a way to um, culminate everything you've learned throughout the year and um, take it to practice again. Um, so you'll uh, be able to um, act as a, an official, a diplomat, um, a security person, and um, negotiating a problem for an entire week. And usually our students um, can't wait to uh, get to the, uh, to the as, um, Okay, I think we, um, I know Anat was having some internet technical difficulties um, and I assume she's probably, um, that's what's happened there. Um, what I'll do is actually in the um, while and that's reconnecting, we can um, jump forward and um, play the. Um, I'm going to play. Oh, no, that's not. And that. Oh, she's back, and that's coming back. Let me see. We can just continue. Hi, Anat. I see you're back. Hi, Anat. Do you want to continue? I'm so sorry. Um, no problem. I know there's is, even uh, internet connection. Do you want to continue? So, uh, did you guys hear about the scheduling more or less? Yes, sure. I would love to. Um, yeah. These are pictures of our visits um, in, the, in the past years to um, Israeli air bases. Uh, we got to uh, check the jets and we got to talk to uh, some of the pilots um, and just learn firsthand of uh, their challenges here in our uh, friendly neighborhood. We can't um, see this anything. Is, um, Do you want as... to reshare? Sorry, we can't see your slide deck. Do you want to reshare it? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so let me go back here. Um, these are the visits we had in the past years to um, Israeli Air Force uh, bases. Um, this is a trip we took to Jerusalem. When we're in Jerusalem, it's unique for the city being such a holy one, but also because we get to see how um, Jews and non-Jews live side by side, uh, most of the time peacefully. So it's a very um, um, interesting um, trip that we do and um, you get to speak to different people. Um, 
these um, two shots are pretty um, amazing to look at now because this is the uh, fence in between the Gaza Strip and um, and the uh, kibbutzim uh, where it all just happened uh, four and a half months ago. Um, this picture is also in the days where things were um, totally different and you know, the fields behind uh, show some other days. So we get to go to the borders. And the reason we take you there is because, again, we put, we stress the um, hands on the understanding of the terrain, the understanding of what's um, um, happening in the border and why things are so complicated. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Let me just show you. This is a trip we took to the Lebanese border, which is also not a, good, a very friendly um, environment right now. But this is a wreckage from uh, 1982, the first Lebanon war. And our students get to also listen firsthand from um, a lieutenant in the Israeli army about what has happened there. Um, this is a lunch break in a kibbutz right near, near the Lebanese border. And this is the simulation, as I spoke. Uh, about before. We do a lot of negotiations. Each of the students, you see, they're all very professionally dressed and uh, they get a role and um, together they um, come up with some solution to a major problem that is being uh, presented to them. This is the session at the end where everyone is nervous and everyone is uh, um, trying to find um, a solution. And uh, yeah, it's over before you know it. Um, I want to talk a little bit really quickly about options, um, uh, professional options um, as you end our program. So many of our students go into uh, simply diplomatic positions. Of course, it's going to be entry levels, uh, but they work themselves up uh, to very high positions in the EU, at the United States, um, the, the, the UN, and different uh, organizations that require um, people who have the understanding of the global um, um, events, um, looking at the, uh, at the picture um, from um, a different perspective. And um, you can stop the share. And some of our students who come from different disciplines will go either into international law and after gaining more understanding of uh, um, security and diplomacy. Some go into security companies. Um, they learn how to um, analyze and uh, uh, many of them get um, very nice positions. Some go um, into journalism and they um, you know, bring, make it happen um, in, um, in that world. So the options um, depend on you and your likes and your uh, strengths and uh, we're here to help. Wonderful, thank you so much Anat. Okay, um, okay. I'm going to actually play a pre-recorded um, video of the, for, from the MA in Cyber Politics and Government um, by the program head, Professor Evetar Metania um, and the program coordinator, Abigail Ben Dayan. And then after that, we'll then go to the Q&A session. Okay. If you guys can't hear it, just let me know. I'm Professor Vietar Matania. In 2018, I was nominated as a full professor here in Tel Aviv University. And one of the most important things that they did is to establish the new, very unique program, the Cyber Politics and Government MA program. What is um, unique in the program is that the uh, teachers and the students learn together. And it is a very important in our program because we study new issues where we find only very few uh, articles, papers, and books about. It uh, combines Israeli students with international ones. It's a hybrid program, and the cetogenic class is very interesting for all the students. Second, uh, we bring uh, not just uh, theorists, but also people with hands, you know, hands on the job. Uh, 
the, the top executives in Israel in the area of cyber and technology in Israel is known to be one of the leaders in these fields. And Tel Aviv University is one of the hubs of, uh, that uh, created and established the policies and the strategies of how Israel became, built its ecosystems of cyber, how Israel uh, succeeded to build the National Cyber Directorate, how the government approached the whole issue. Tel Aviv University and its professor were the heart and the core of the, uh, of the thoughts about this and the ideas. And this is the right place to learn about cyber technology and policies. everyone. Nice to meet you all. My name is Abigail. I'm the Cyber Politics and Government Program Coordinator. So this is a very unique program here at TAU. It's actually the fourth year running and it's really developing from year to year. Um, the head of the program is Professor Vitar Matanya. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Um, so as for the program, you don't need any kind of background in coding. This is basically teaching cyber to non-technologists, I'd say. And in a program, you will learn about how cyber is used in Israel and as defense, analyzing data, learning about social media and improving it, aspects of the cyber digital revolution and management tools for large systems and so on. It's learning about cyber from the political science aspect. Um, so here's some general information regarding the program. So the program is a one year program, three semesters. You will need a BA um, with a GPA of 82 or higher. Now TAU will evaluate all transcripts and documents, so don't even worry about it. Just have them sent to me and I will take care of it with the relevant department. So the required documents for your application will be a CV, a letter of recommendation, a letter of intent in English about a page long, an official uh, an original BA and MA document with a stamp from the Institute. Uh, we will need both um, transcripts and uh, a letter that you've completed, some kind of diploma or so uh, that you've completed your studies. And um, an English proficiency exam will be needed for those who haven't studied in English. So uh, the program takes place twice a week on Tuesdays from 12 uh, p.m to 8.30 and Fridays from 8 a.m. to a quarter to two. In addition, we will have a full, um, a full Thursday session, four days like that, as part of Professor Matania's mandatory course. That will take place during the first semester. We will um, have the dates on the schedule as soon as we finalize the schedule. Our program is 36 credits in total. We have four mandatory courses, which are 12 credits, and eight elective courses, which are 24 credits. Each course in the program is three credits. You will be able to also take up to six credits from other MA programs, if you please so, within the programs at TAU. Um, they will count as part of the 24 elective credits that you need. So that's a very cool thing that you could explore and have other um, options out there. So if any of you have any questions, I'd be happy to assist and answer. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Abigail. Um, okay, let me just so now is the time, guys. We um, you know, we can do some QA session. I'll just switch off the recording. Um, let me just switch that off.